This video covers taking single images and image stacks in fluorescence. If you haven't already familiarized yourself with taking bright field images, check out that video first and then come back here. Just like before, we'll begin by opening up any windows that we need. That's mostly the camera controls, the Z meter to tell if we're focusing up or down, the image organizer window, and the macro view. Then we'll get a live image up. I'll go to the acquire tab, and then from the device command sequences dropdown, I'm going to choose DAPI. DAPI usually allows a low exposure time and is a good channel to start with. I'll also turn on the live image. Then I can get my tissue in focus. If your screen still looks really dark, try turning up the light level on your scope. Tap this control to turn it on and rotate the dial to increase or decrease the light level. You can also use this slider to send light either to the eyepieces or to the camera. When you're working in fluorescence, there are a couple of other tools that you have available to you. You're not limited to just exposure time. You can click and drag to bring this white point slider down. This will cut down the dynamic range of your camera, and if you cut it down too far, it can certainly give you a grainy image. But in general, adjusting the black and white points is one of the best ways to get a good looking live image preview. If your camera has gain or offset controls, it's okay to use those as well. Just remember that gain boosts both signal and noise in the image and can easily yield an image that's not as good as just using exposure time. There isn't one correct way to take a fluorescent image, but one approach that I like to use is to start by adjusting the exposure time. Increase that until your camera histogram takes up about two thirds to three quarters of the histogram window or until you hit 200 milliseconds. Above 200 milliseconds, your exposure time is a little bit too high and it starts to be slow and hard to focus. So keep your exposure time down to 200, maybe 250 milliseconds at most. And then if you need to, start adjusting either the gain and offset or bring down the white point slider. Most of the time on a modern system with a modern camera, you'll be able to get away with a really low exposure time, usually less than 100 milliseconds. Don't panic if you can't get a good image at low magnification. It actually gets easier to get an image the higher in magnification you go in general. So try at 20x or 40x if you can't find anything at 2x or 5x. Once you've got an image that you're happy with, move your cursor around and click to set a reference point, just like you normally would for Brightfield. Again, I don't really care about this data file. I only want to take the images, so I'm going to choose an arbitrary reference point. Now, in this multi-channel control window, I need to set up the channels. Click on the Setup button right here. Open the Multi-Channel Acquires tab 1 through 3 and 4 through 6 and check or uncheck any channels. These channels have your device command sequences that will be run before you take the image and after. Usually you just want to have the shutter closed after you take a channel. And before you take a channel, just enable, say, DS Red. In this particular case, my tissue only has a red and a blue channel, so I'll uncheck green and far red to turn those off, then click OK. Now, using the multi-channel control window, I need to go to each of those channels and set up the exposure times, gain and offset and white points independently. Let's do the red channel first. I'll click on that channel in the multi-channel control window and click and drag the white point slider so it's the full dynamic range. Then I'll adjust my exposure time until it's around maybe 150 milliseconds or so. Actually, it looks like 90 milliseconds looks good here. That gives me about two thirds of the camera histogram window. Now I'll click on DAPI and set up the blue channel. DAPI needs an even lower exposure time than the red did. But note that your exposure times are only saved when you click on a different channel. So click on the red channel once you've finished the, the blue channel, just to double check and make sure all of your settings look good. That way you can be sure your exposure times and other camera settings are saved. If everything looks good, click on acquire single image, just like you did for Brightfield work. The software will go to each of those channels, stitch them together, false color them, and generate a single combined image. Even after you've taken an image, you can still make changes to it. Let's switch over to the image tab and then I'll bring up the image adjustment window. Here, I can turn individual channels off and on by checking or unchecking them. 
I can change the color that was applied to those channels. And I can make changes to the histogram just by dragging the white point slider up and down. Let's go up to higher magnification and acquire another image. I'll first click on the DAPI channel and you'll notice that the exposure times have to be set separately on a per channel and per objective basis. That's because this remember video settings option is enabled right here. I'll use the approach that I talked about before, setting the exposure time to around 200 milliseconds and then bringing down the white point slider so that the dynamic range in the image mostly fills the range of the histogram, that is the distance between the black point here and the white point right here. Once everything looks good, I'll click on the DAPI channel again to save the settings for the red channel and then click on acquire single image. Now this image looks good, but there's a whole lot of that cell that we can't see right now, so I'd like to take an image stack of that same cell. To take this stack, it'll be very similar to the process that I used in Brightfield. I'll first go back to the live image, and then I'll click on options, and here I'll choose set top and bottom, and then use the set button for both. I'll then pick Dappy, and I'll focus up And let's choose DS Red and find the top of that cell, just like that. And then I can click on Set Top. Maybe I'll even go a little bit above it and set the top up there. And then focus all the way down to the bottom of that cell and then set the bottom. And let's set up the DAPI channel and make sure those settings look good. Usually, if things work for a single channel image, they'll work for a single plane image, they'll work for a multi plane image stack as well. Once all your settings are good, you can click on Acquire Image Stack right here, and the software will run through all 23 planes of this image stack and acquire them. There's one option that's definitely worth mentioning here. If you click the Setup button in the Multi-Channel Control window, you can turn on Acquire the Channels for Multi-Channel Image Stacks a stack at a time. This will enable these Before Stack and After Stack options, Change the before acquiring image so that it's nothing and change before acquiring stack to be your channel. I'll do the same thing for the DAPI channel and click OK. If we were to reacquire this, it would now acquire red, 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 red all the way top to bottom and then it would switch over to the blue channel and acquire blue, 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 blue all the way down to the bottom. It saves a lot of time that way. The reason that option is not on by default is that if you're looking for co-labeling, you probably want to know exactly where things are in Z. That option tends to be really, really good at taking just good looking images, but you might have slightly different Z registrations. So if you really care about co-labeling, especially in Z, it's a good idea to leave that acquire a stack at a time turned off with the default settings. Once your stack is finished acquiring, you can press page up and page down to move through it. Those are the keys in your keyboard located above the arrow keys. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have File, Preferences, Mouse Wheel, Focus with Mouse Wheel turned on. Most people like to set the Z distance per wheel click to be the same as the spacing of their image stack. There's also, under the Image tab, the ability to take a min or max projection. Min projection is typically used for bright field images, while max projection is typically used for fluorescence. That looks like this and will give you a nice flattened stack. It's worth making a quick note on file formats here. When you go to save these images using the Image Organizer, you'll be given the same choice as before about file formats. The MBF JPEG 2000 file format is a really nice format if you're going to be working with this image again in Stereo Investigator or in Neurolucida or BrainMaker or any of our other products. However, the TIFF file format is a RGB red, green, blue format. It doesn't really recognize channels. So if your channel colors aren't red, green, and blue, like if you have four channels or if you've used yellow as a color for a channel, the TIFF format isn't going to be ideal. Instead, use the MBF TIFF format. 
the MBF TIFF format can't really be opened in third-party software, although Fiji, which is Fiji is just ImageJ with the MBF formats plugin, is capable of opening MBF TIFF files. But the MBF TIFF format does support four channels, and it will recognize the channels, not your colors. So use the MBF TIFF format if you need a multi-channel image that's lossless.